Ars Morendi, The Art of Dying, by Dominic Rover. My little finger is dying, just the little finger on my left hand. I carry it like a single gold coin in a cluster of other fingers, still trying to stay alive. But the word is out, and they will have to be ready, too, when their time comes. My Chinese lady doctor, who does not believe in acupuncture, diagnoses my ailment in impeccable Latin, digitus nervix immobilis, which means, of course, your little finger is dying. Numb and heavy now, it will spread like an invisible stain into the other fingers of my left hand, down my left arm, across my chest, then up the right arm, into the fingers of my right hand, a lovely rainbow of death. I am told the dying process may skip across the torso for a while, if I take hot baths and long walks and uh, <clears throat> eat lots of garlic. But infallibly, a like fall of night, it will descend into the nether limbs, hip to thigh to ankle, until the feet, hanging there in my black wallabies, wait to be declared officially dead. But I promise I will leave my liver to the liver bank, my kidneys to the kidney bank, my eyeballs to the eyeball bank, and my meager monthly salary in perpetuity to the Committee for the Rehabilitation of Downtown Providence. Fully awake now, I notice that all the sounds and sights and taste are keener, brighter. I admit that I am jealous. I am jealous because I have never had a near-death experience, but I have been near life so many times. I have felt the touch of life and have trembled at the touch. So even in the face of death, I am willing and eager to testify on behalf of life. But I need more time. There is never enough time, and death robs us of the little that is left. I have work to do, friends to be loved, enemies to be forgiven. Words to be shouted against the storm. Shadows to be dispelled that still blot out the sun. Besides, I am bound by a pact I made long ago with beauty, that before I died, I would shape one word, one cry, one song and let the sound of it reach everywhere, so that no one might escape from love. I cannot describe the power of this word, but the thought of bringing it to life in my life fills me with joy. Now, after the word of life, there will be time for death. I have made my plans eyes closed, hands folded on my lap. I will lean back in my black vinyl lazy boy and fall like a sash weight. No need for choice or effort. The weight of my body will carry me down, down. Without pain or passion, I will give myself over. According to our custom, my body will lay overnight in the silence of the house chapel, stretched out in the very place where I used to pray. No, I will not go like Howard Hughes. I will cut my hair and clip my nails and stay clean and neat till the very end. I will not, like Damon Runyon, ask to be cremated and to have my ashes strewn lovingly by helicopter over Manhattan Island. 
With my luck, a brisk wind would come up off Sandy Hook and blow me to Bridgeport. No, I will not imitate anyone. I will go in my own way, covered with unhealed wounds, uncanceled debts, and no collateral. Heavy to look at, with heavy hands and heavy limbs, but easy, easy to carry. I wore a borrowed kappa and a new pair of shoes bought just for the occasion, and a large rosary locked in once and for all under my rigid hands. I lay there through the night and watched my brothers and friends as they watched me, baffled by the choices they were free to make. Should they offer me honor, respect, puzzlement, or honest complaint at the promises unfilled, our common woe? They watched me carefully and courteously, still wondering who I really was, and wondering, too, what it would be like to die. I know what I wanted to tell them, that death always defends its own secrets, that it feeds on faith and the rush of heart to heart. You always want to be with the one you love whatever the shape or color of the gaze. I knew they always looked kindly upon me, and I know they will be kind to my sisters, and even lie a little on my behalf to enhance the memory of my <clears throat> piety and usefulness. Now there is only my body and the place it occupies in this place a body lightened and sweetened and ready to be lifted up. Strange to speak of the body in this way, but my spirit has already fled, and I am, even now, free to begin my new calling, to cultivate the ways of love and to teach the art of dying.